Okay, are we on? Yes, we are on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, morning, morning. Um, I'm an English guy. I don't know whether you can figure that out. Um, working in Germany. So the most important thing is this clock, and I have 19 minutes and 47 seconds to do what we need to do this morning. Um, I first started cooking at uh, 1978, it was, 1978, in Yorkshire. And the chef I worked for then in a hotel, it was a Forte hotel, Trust House Forte in those days, said to me I was a complete moron. I couldn't get it right. The systems that they were using in the kitchen, it just wasn't working. I was a complete moron. Now, fast forward to 2020, and I'm an oxymoron. Because in the world that we live in now, I'm what's known as a landlord. I'm a, I work for a property company. We provide you with the spaces that your restaurants occupy. And the reason I think that I'm probably an oxymoron is that I'm a nice landlord. Because I came from the world that the restaurant industry is from. And I think I probably understand more about the complexity of operating food service in rented spaces than most of the landlord community that we deal with every day. And what I want to do in the next 18 minutes and 30 seconds is talk about Germany, because that's where I'm now based. Um, I live in England, but my head office is Hamburg, and I have a, a job which makes me responsible for about 4,500 restaurants, a number of hotels, um, lots of office buildings, and my role is to look after all of the, the food service and hospitality and the placemaking within that. Um, as I say, I'm, I'm a chef by trade originally, and I still cook. Every time we open a new restaurant, I go back into that kitchen and I work with the team to understand whether or not we've provided them with the right space, whether or not what we said we would deliver is actually what we have delivered for them. Um, and that's really important for us because in the new world, you can talk all those nice words about partnership and trust and, you know, incentives and all those things that bring tenants into property. But the reality is in the new world, if we stuff this up, we don't have any occupiers. If we get it wrong, we won't have any tenants. And in the old days, it didn't matter because there was a line of tenants a load of you that wanted to be there. It's not the case anymore. We have to work harder and we have to be better than ever we used to be. So, the handsome guy on the left is Alexander Otto. Um, Herr Otto is the CEO of ECE. He's the, uh, one of the lead family members of the Otto family, which is a private family fund based out of Hamburg, second generation. His father built the very first shopping centers in Germany. Um, his father actually made his money after the war by selling shoes door to door. He used to put a piece of paper through the door and then come back the next week and sell a pair of shoes to that household. He then started a catalogue business. That catalogue business then went online and now the family is worth in excess of 40 billion from selling shoes door to door. They've invested in property all around the world ECE is their shopping center and office building uh, business, of which I, the fat old English chef on the right, is responsible for all the food service, leisure, and placemaking within that. And I've been there since July 2017. And my God, it's been a journey. Not just from London to Hamburg every week, but a journey into a world which I thought I knew. I've been working in Germany for 25 years. I thought I knew it, but until you actually go and work in a company, in a country, and immerse yourself in the culture, it is really hard to understand what's going on. And that's why so many of you are sitting there today and thinking, why would I ever think of going to Germany? Well, hopefully, I will be able to convince you a little bit more about why you should be in Germany in the next 15 minutes. Okay. So, Germany, the economic fundamentals are astonishing. Um, 83.1 million people. Last year they said 82.9, but to be honest, 
There are about half a million out. There's a migrant movement across Europe we all know about, which is making it really hard to measure the exact numbers. The big difference in Germany is that we have large cities. I, I always joke with colleagues about the UK and say that there are two countries. There's the UK, Great Britain, and there's London. And London is in itself almost like in its own country because it is unique in the way that it operates in the food service market. In Germany, it's a little different. We have really significant cities, uh, almost of equal measure. Uh, the difference is that the operation of food service tends to be incredibly regionalized. Germany is a federal republic of regions, and it operates like that. It operates in a very insular way. And so if you're in Hamburg, you don't really think about opening in Munich. And if you're in Munich, you don't really think about opening in Frankfurt. And there are very, very few businesses that at the moment are pan-German in the way that they are actually operating. But the economics are great. They are really, really strong. Everybody says to me, ah, Germany, no, I don't want to be in Germany because, you know, you don't get a very high average spend. Well, there is an obsession about the cost of food in Germany caused by a range of fantastic discounter supermarkets that have been selling raw material product in grocery for years at really good prices. And so the German consumer is looking at those grocery prices and saying, how does that compare against restaurants? Okay, so we want cheap food. And there has been an obsession with cheap food. Don't worry about the environment. So long as the service is okay, normally miserable, normally non-smiling, but so long as the food arrives at the table and it's cheap, it's fine. That's the old world. That is the old world of Germany. And it still exists, but more and more people are prepared to pay a little bit more and to get more experience into the overall food service enjoyment, their session, their time with us as food service operators. And not even the German operators have figured that out yet. There are some super smart ones. Losteria stands out in my mind as a brand that, that still offers great value, but also offers the opportunity to trade up. So if you want to have a good time, you can. And you can spend more money if you want to. But the base core product range allows you to be inexpensive in your purchase. And they are going across Germany. And they are powerful and they are strong. But the landscape is so open at the moment. In our retail estate, less than 4% of the floor space is food or leisure. Direct comparison with England, 11%. High street, less than a third of what it is in the UK. People talk about Germany as if it's not worth going to. I can absolutely guarantee it is. It has its problems, but it's absolutely worth the effort to go to Germany and open a business there. Or even better, take your existing business and move it there. And that's what my job is all about. That's why I'm actually speaking today. Because my job is to make sure that I am raising the profile, the awareness level of Germany in the minds of food service operators. I've been doing it for 30 years. This Last week was my 30th anniversary of working in consulting in the food service industry. I'm incredibly proud of what I worked on. I ran a business for 25 years, 26 years. I sold it to JLL, 2014. Some of my JLL colleagues are in the room. Some of my ex-JLL colleagues are in the room. It didn't quite work out the way I thought, but it doesn't matter. I'm now working at ECE, but incredibly proud of the fact that we put food on the map in retail world. And when you look at the, the performance of food service in retail world, it is above norm. It is higher than usual. And yes, landlords got greedy. My God, did they get greedy. You look at the rents that were being charged at peak times, the conditions that were going with that. And, and it, it, it was... It was impossible for a business to sustain that. Even if they were brilliant, it was impossible for them to sustain it. 
And sadly, a lot of you weren't brilliant. A lot of the food service industry that went into those locations were doing exactly the same as they have been doing for 10 years. Cookie cutter, repeat build, same format, same menu, same offer, same everything. And do you know what happened? It wasn't just the financial crisis. It wasn't just that rents went up and service charges went up and business rates went up. The customer got smart. The guest got savvy. And the guest decided what you were doing just wasn't good enough in so many cases. And we're now left with this two-sided world of food service where the smart and the engaged and the exciting are delivering brilliant stuff for the guest. Stuff that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up because it's so bloody good. And then stuff that you walk down the street. And Robin said it earlier, Robin Rowland, gorgeous man, super smart. You walk down the street and you know who's dying. You can smell it. You can see the brands that have got no future. And you know, that's sad for me, but it's also realistic. That's the world that we live in. So my encouragement to you is, yes, if you've got something great, come to us. Because it's not about just the quality of your, your covenant strength. It's not just about how much money you've got in the bank. We are backing businesses now from a very early stage as a landlord because we need to, because you're the future of what we're going to do. The phrase we use in our business every single day is we want placemakers, not space takers. If all you're going to do is take some space with us, and pay us a rent, and not add extra value, then, okay, we might consider it in some locations, but what we actually need is for somebody who's going to come in and really help us make our place special, whether that's a cinema, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a coffee bar. Being normal is okay, but being good isn't good enough anymore. It just isn't. And you look across the streets of Amsterdam, and you look across the streets of London, and you look across the streets of Munich, Hamburg, Berlin, Stuttgart, any of those, and you can see it. Those that are dying, and those that are winning. And my boss, Alexander, wants us to back those businesses that are winning. And there's a good reason to do that. We've got some great food service growth. We've got some huge numbers going on in Germany at the moment. You know, things are moving extremely well in the food service market. But there's still this, every time I meet new operators, they go, oh, yeah, but the wages cost in Germany is so high, you know, and we don't know how to do the logistics and the legal's more complicated. And there's this thing called the euro. And, you know, it's just too hard. Well, stay in the UK then. Stay in the UK because I've got 147 brands that want to come to Germany at the moment, from Asia, from Turkey. Turkey is proving to be a hugely rich range of new operators, from Romania, from Poland, from Italy. There's even one from Austria, if anybody knows where that is. Yeah? There's lots of people that want to come to Germany because they can see the size of the prize now. And what we're doing is we want to help them Economically, they can see the data. They can see what's good about Germany. But they're scared, and quite rightly, that there's a lot of things to overcome. A lot of things to overcome. And, you know, we're, we're living in a world where, especially if you're into VC, if you're into backing businesses, you have a finite amount of opportunities that you can take. And the UK, through lots of reasons some of them self-inflicted, some not, has proved to be a very challenging environment in which to operate. Competition is still very strong. At least the property market is loosening up. And, and there are, there's more intellect going into the UK property market as well now. There are some really good specialists. Mike Webb, where are you? Somewhere over there. Um, really great specialist in terms of advising on food service in the property world to help property advisors and owners know what to do. This stuff is really important. 
But when you look at the fundamentals and then look at what we're trying to do, the size of the opportunity is absolutely massive. We're having to repurpose our estate. Okay, I'll put that into English. We're having to repurpose our estate. What it means is bits of what we've got don't work anymore. Okay, so what we have to do is knock them down and rebuild them. Everybody knows about department stores. They're probably not going to be here for very much longer in the way that they operate. There will still be some great ones, and there are some great ones, and there's a lot of crap. Middle market, lower market, too much space, not enough sales, not enough footfall, not enough anything. But they make damn good cinemas, and they make really good restaurant spaces, and they make really good market halls, so that's what we're having to do. We're having to repurpose our estate to get those new things in. And the amount of money we're investing is enormous because we have the money and we have no choice. And I sit in the board meeting with Alexander and the colleagues quite often and we talk about what's the choice. Well, the choice is we don't change and we die. Or we do change and we suddenly start to invigorate the market again. And it's the same as a retailer or a food service operator. If you haven't changed your menu for 10 years or your clothing range for two years, you are not going to be successful, generally. And so we have to update our product range. And, and we're there waiting for you to come and talk to us about that. And, and we're out there talking because the landscape is uncluttered, it's open. It is there, waiting for you. And Germany is a very beautiful place. It's got some very nice cities. Each of them has unique characteristics, but it's well worth being in Germany. So, why haven't you come so far? Well, first of all, because the UK, the Netherlands, Belgium, France, Spain, they've all got good food service markets, and you always want to grow in your home market first. The other problem with Germany, as I said earlier, is it's a decentralized market. It is not easy to just open across the whole of Germany because there are cultural differences, there are spend differences, there are some language differences around it, which makes it a little bit harder than just saying, I'm just going to roll across Germany and it'll be fine. There's a lower demand for out-of-home service at the moment. And the attitude to food service has been reserved. How many Germans are there in the room at the moment? Okay, one. Excellent. So we're sort of outnumbering you at the moment, okay? Um, the reason I ask is because I say this quite often at a conference, that my German colleagues, our German consumers, our guests, are beginning to learn how to enjoy themselves out of the home. And, and I mean that in the nicest possible way. Because if you look at what, what's happened with cinema market, they're generally in secondary locations. They're not attached to food service. They're isolated. They're beginning to understand that you can go out and enjoy not just great food and drink, but actually a really nice environment with it as well. We're beginning to see burger chains coming along and pizza chains coming along that are delivering just a better quality of everything, not just the food on the plate. And the German customer is responding, and especially the younger ones. The younger ones are much more excited by that because they are the Gen Zs, they are interested in the experience now, they're interested in photographing it. And yet, the most successful per square meter restaurant chain in Germany is Blockhouse, which if you've never been to Blockhouse, you need to go and Google it because it's probably the most traditional steakhouse format you're ever gonna see. And it is still, per square meter, the most successful. And it's the most successful because the traditional, slightly older German customer loves it. They've grown up with it. It's the place you would go with your granny. The trouble is, granny's not gonna be around forever. And the young kids that went with granny won't go there themselves. So there's an evolution happening as well. So we then got on and did some weird stuff. Um, this particular project, Futopia, is on the fourth floor of a shopping center on the Zeil in Frankfurt. Everybody said it wouldn't work. Great. It won't work, Johnny. So we built it anyway. 100 million euros, refurbishing the fourth floor and the rest of the shopping center. It's been, it's been hugely successful. 
Finally, finally got the damn thing open September last year after lots and lots and lots of work. Um, Gamza, the lady on the left, runs a company called Big Chefs in Turkey. And I've known Gamza for years, and I managed to persuade her to come and open Big Chefs in Germany themselves, not with a partner. And they said, well, we'll open it, but then we'll pass it on to a partner, we'll find a franchisee, and we'll deliver it, and everything else. 1,200. 1,200. What is that number, 1,200? It's the number of customers they have in their restaurant a day. A day. It's a new brand to Germany. It's on the fourth floor of a shopping center. 1,200 customers a day. We supported them in coming. We gave them consulting advice. We paid for other people to give them advice on supply chain, legal, all the stuff that they needed to know to get them to come to our space. And that support we call our Welcome to Germany package. And it's specific to each brand, but what we try and do is wrap around you and help you to understand what you need to know to get to Germany, to come and open with us. And it's a really simple, really well-developed program under what we call our We Love Food and Leisure. Love. James, where are you, James? Love. Love is the best word ever when it comes to food service. And our brand used to be ECE, and everybody thought we're just a hard-nosed, hard-assed property company, because we are. And then we invented the We Love Food and Leisure, and we started to become a very much more personalized, very much more friendly, very much more tactile business to work with you. And we are. So we made it. We got there. Thank you for listening. I want to just show a very short one-minute video on the Frankfurt Project, and that's it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So 16 restaurants, cafes, bars, and an Astor film lounge with two outside terraces that happens to be located on the fourth floor of a shopping center. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jonathan. <clears throat> I just want to give Jonathan a little bit of a shout out. He's been uh, mentoring some of our young concepts out there. Was that a good experience for you? Fantastic. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. It's like touching a vein, feeling the lifeblood of our industry coming in. It's brilliant. It's Absolutely really exciting. Yeah. yeah. Thank it's you lovely. very much indeed.